So I have Daniel Skelton. He's back on the podcast. Thank you for joining us, Daniel. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for having me. And my name is Jacob, and this is Ignite Fire. Well, thank you, Daniel, for coming. Uh, and we're going to jump into this podcast right now. And if anyone has any questions, go ahead and or comments, leave them in the comment section, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, and we will be able to see those and respond to those real time. So let's uh, we're going to be talking about things you might not know about the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Daniel, for coming. You are not only a preacher, pastor, leader, but also now a teacher at Karis Bible College, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm an instructor. Um, I'm over the activations, which what, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's just creating a safe place for people to practice in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, hearing God's voice, learning about their identity, activations, just putting something to practice. And so I'm over that and also do teaching there. So yeah. So, well, thank you. And it's an honor to be your friend. And uh, so just for those, uh, for context, for those who don't know, we met on a Karis Bible College mission trip to North Carolina. Anywhere in the world, God brought us together in North Carolina. Yeah. So that Amen. was pretty awesome, though. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think like, man, you know, God really brought us together. And I'm looking forward to just what God's doing in both of our lives, not just together, but, you know, yeah. individually, man, like Absolutely. you've got a ministry in your heart and, and I do too. And so, yeah, dude, we're changing the world. Absolutely. Well, so, so that brings us to our topic. I think it, whether you're someone's a father, a mother, uh, a church member, a pastor, we, it's important for us to hear the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to know our word so we can we can have our foundation but it's important to to be able to hear what the holy spirit is saying and leading us and telling us you know when to stop and when to go and what turns to make and so do you want to share a little bit on that on uh being guided by the holy spirit yeah you know there's a lot to the holy spirit so those of you that's watching like you know i don't want you to think that we're going to dive off into super deep stuff here because there's so much to cover um, I do have some notes, and so we'll just kind of go through those. But I'm, you know, what we were praying about, what we had really felt was just talking about things that concern the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is somebody that we have to lean on as Christians, and a lot of people don't know how to do that. The, a lot of the activations I do, I see this a lot of times in believers where they may read the Word, but they don't know the power of the Holy Spirit, and there's a balance in that. Knowing the word is extremely important, but it's not just knowledge. It has to come from your heart. And so I hope that we can break this down a little more where it will make sense to you. Those of you that are watching and maybe don't understand this and maybe you do, but hopefully this will encourage you. So one thing I think we should understand before we even can really learn how to walk in the Holy Spirit. This is something that when I first got saved. I did not understand at all. I was not raised in church. I ended up sleeping on the floor of a church for two years, just going, God, I've got to know who you are so I can know who I am and then show me how to walk in this. And a lot of this came from understanding that Holy Spirit is a person and understanding his power. And so let me cover that a little more. So the personhood of the Holy Spirit John 14, 16 through 17, he said, and I will ask the father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because neither sees him nor knows him. So that that's part of what I'm saying. You have to know him. You have to spend time with the Holy Spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit. And then, and he, and you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So this is right before Jesus goes to the cross and he's explaining it to his disciples like he's been with you, but now he's going to be in you. And you, we see this in Acts at the beginning of Acts. The Holy Spirit falls. We all know this story in chapter two and, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we see all through the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles and filled them in Acts 11 and uh, with Cornelius. There there is so many different instances where the Holy Spirit was introduced to somebody. But then you have to learn how to walk in them. A lot of Christians, Jacob, will, and I know you've seen this dude, like, and, and a lot of us have, they'll get saved, they'll receive, they'll get baptized, 
and then they never know the power of the Holy Spirit. They never know the what he's supposed to be doing. Absolutely. I remember I was in my early 20s and I was listening to 13 hours a 13 hour teaching of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? And at the end of 13 hours, I started I I figured it you know the Holy Spirit was guiding me and it I realized that you received the gift of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues by faith. And so I got down on my knees and I and I closed my eyes and I said, "Lord, I believe in my heart, confess with my mouth that I received your Holy Spirit and I'm going to speak in tongues by faith. And I started speaking in tongues and I was like, no, that's not it. That can't be it. And the Spirit was saying, no, it's by faith. And so I said, that's it. It's by faith. And I started speaking and the language came. But I tell you what, I did not change. I continued to be the exact same person that I was. I kept going to bars and drinking and and I was filled with the Holy Spirit, but I was not definitely, definitely not walking in the Spirit. <laughs> I was walking in the flesh for sure. So it's easy. So, so I realized that you can receive the Holy Spirit, but n- not even touch the power that He has. Yeah, yeah. And you know, one thing I kind of contribute that to is you make you can experience get the gifts of the Spirit actually pretty easy um, because they they come without repentance. They're they're irrevocable. And so we, the power of the Holy Spirit, he just, that's just who he is. That's just part of who he is, is he has, he carries the power of Christ. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is walking in the fruit of the spirit is the foundation. Knowing God's word is the foundation. And a lot of people will just go, oh, I had this great encounter. (laughs) And then the rest of the week, you know, they just live however. And, and that confuses a lot of Christians and especially Let's say we take somebody that gets saved. Maybe they're raised in church their whole life. And I'm not trying to be critical over different denominations, but a lot of denominations, different ones, will teach that the power no longer exists. And so what you usually see from that is that grace is now a license to sin because there's no power. So if you never see evidence of power and realize that Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, then then you, you're you powerless. So now we're just living a life that, well, brother, hopefully we'll make it through and make it into heaven. And we just, somehow we're going to just crawl crippled and not in wholeness and and good old sinners just make it to heaven. And we mentioned a little bit of that on our on the last podcast where people take Romans 3, 21 and says, oh man, we're just sinners saved by grace. And they think that they're still sinners. And so, you know, but the next verse says that we're justified by the works of Christ. So there's, there's this revelation that you have to have of not only just his power, but also walking in the fruit of the spirit. And this is something we've taught our kids for man forever. Um, my son, he's been seeing in the spirit since he was four. Um, They've been praying in the Holy Spirit. They re- they receive the Holy Spirit themselves. They pray in tongues, and so we had to teach them the fruit of the Spirit and and identify where they're not walking maybe in self discipline. You know how can you mm-hmm. walk in the Word in your life when you're just striving for it? The Holy Spirit is the one that. Let's check out Romans eight twenty six. It says, "Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses." Mm-hmm. Okay. For we do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings to deep for words. So the Holy Spirit is what connects us to Jesus, what actually gives us our new identity. It's revelation from the Holy Spirit. So without that, we'll never know who we are, and we will just strive and try to earn God's love. And I believe this is a huge part of why there's so much performance based salvation mindsets in Christians. Like if I do something wrong, Oh no, like God's out to kill me. Um, there's a lot to that. You know, people think that, that God brings sicknesses and things like that. When John 10, 10 clearly says that the enemy comes to still kill and destroy and then divides it clearly with Jesus came to bring life and life more abundantly. And so you can't access that life without the Holy Spirit. 
You know, I think, and that's a revelation that has to be revealed because you're you're right. I've heard a lot of Christians will will say that you know they'll they'll take something that the enemy's doing to them, and then label it as God, and then accept it, even though it's a clear violation of certain scriptures on what Christ has done for us. And then and then I've heard people say that oh he's doing this to discipline me, <laughs> or he's doing this to to uh, to to teach me a lesson. I don't know any good fathers that will break their child's arm to teach them a lesson, you know, right. It, right. It, it, unless you're, you're, you're committing child abuse, you know, <laughs> that's, <laughs> and that's not our father. Um, thankfully, thankfully. Yeah. And then, and they'll look at, and so there's something that, that, that I, that I often share with a lot of people too, is that we have to look, especially through the old Testament, through the lens of the cross. And so God did operate in a different covenant with the Old Testament believers, you know, and he was very harsh and he was very, uh, you know, there, there, you have, you, you can't deny certain things that God has done in the Old Testament, but then you look at what Christ came to do and he died to, to put away that old covenant and all judgment. I love this is from past, present and future was laid upon Christ on the cross. So then we can no longer be judged a second time by those things. And so now we're free through him, not to continue to sin, but to, but to receive his power for a new life. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, it's, um, it's, I don't have this in my notes, but second Corinthians five seventeen sixteen seventeen, but it talks about us being this new creation mm -hmm. with this new identity. And boy, that scripture just throws people off that don't believe this. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I'm kind of new, but kind of not. Like, I'm still going to just do all my old things that I used to do. Yeah. And, you know, man, this is one thing that we have to understand is the role of Holy Spirit in our salvation. Mm -hmm. It's not our our role to fix ourselves. But for us through, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, we all know the scripture, especially Jacob and I, if you've went to Karis, like it's a big staple scripture for the Bible college we went through. But 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says that we are spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And I won't get too much into that, but really what that means is we're three parts. That's what it said. The word mm -hmm. says that we are spirit, soul, and body. So our soul has to submit to the Holy Spirit once we've received the Holy Spirit. We are now, we no longer have the spirit of of operating by the fallen world and by Satan, we now have the Holy Spirit once we come into salvation and our soul is being renewed. Our spirit has everything we need. It's perfect. The Holy Spirit is perfect. Okay. Like we should all know that unless you're in some crazy doctrine that you've gotten from someone else. So the, our soul has to submit to the Holy Spirit and we have to renew our minds by the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Titus three, five through six says, he saved us, not because of the works done by us in righteousness. So not by our works, not by how much we can clean ourselves up and not how much we can strive to fix the things that we know is wrong. Cause it's not condemnation tells you that you have to fix it. Conviction causes you to lean on the Holy spirit and to, and to co-labor with him to fix it out of a place of knowing you're loved. So and then it says, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't need regeneration and renewal. It's us that have regeneration and renewal. And that's not talking about in heaven. That's talking about now whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our savior. So we are we have access to these riches of regeneration and of renewal of the Holy Spirit, but it depends on how much you lean on him. And I think this is where we see, I, I think of this a lot because, you know, you're, you're into the prophetic culture, dude, you have the gift of, of a prophet as Ephesians 4 11 talks about. And I believe God is raising up generations that are moving from celebrities to community. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Especially in the prophetic especially in the gifts of the spirit and in, in the anointing is what mm -hmm. we call it. And, and I believe in the anointing, mm -hmm. but what happens is we create these people, the image that they're a celebrity 
when we all have the same Holy Spirit and there becomes this, I call it the prom mentality, (laughs) but you know, at prom, like it was only the cool kids that would get out there and dance. You know what I mean? And you're just like sitting on the sidelines, like, man, you know, I'm too cool for that. You know, he's just trying to, you know, and you're lost like last year's Easter eggs because you don't even realize the power that's within you. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.20 says he can do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask, think, or imagine according to the power in us. It's not because someone's more anointed. Now there's different gifts, but, but, uh, first Corinthians 12, six says that he works all in all. So if we're all, if Jesus is the standard for us to all be like, to do the same works Christ did that applied to everybody. Yeah. So we have to realize that the role of the Holy Spirit in our salvation is to regenerate and to renew our soul. But some people lean on the Holy Spirit more. And that's why we mm-hmm. see, oh, well, they're just more anointed. Oh, how did you how did you break through that all that unforgiveness and things you went through in your life? Like, man, the Holy Spirit just did something great for you. Like, no, that's available to all of us. Absolutely. The gifts are available to all of us. The fruit of this, you see people that walk in love right? Mm -hmm. Like you're in a tough meeting. Like you, you know, you've been in business. I've been in ministry and business for around 15 years altogether. Um, and you know, there can be tough meetings and you see people that, man, they can stay in love. They can stay in the fruit of the spirit and still have healthy conflict. And we see Jesus do this, you Mm -hmm. know, with his, with his disciples. So I think that's where we get this mixed up is, all of you that are listening, you can look at someone and be like, man, they're just so anointed or they're just so gifted. But you have to realize the same Holy Spirit's in you. It just depends on how much you're going to lean on them. Do you wake up every day like, God, what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Are you praying in tongues? Are you leaning on the gifts given to you? You know, if like we all can prophesy. And uh, Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 14. Um, we all can prophesy one by one. So are we walking up to people and putting ourselves in a position where we have to prophesy? <laughs> like we can't yeah. hide. We can't wait for some magical thing to happen that we think God's going to do. We just go and do it because we're moved with compassion and leaning on the Holy spirit. That was something that when we had a conversation, I was asking you, Hey, how do I, <laughs> how do I activate more of the gifting that? Cause I know that, you know, the Lord has anointed me, but how do I walk into it? And you're like, dude, you just got to go and do it. <laughs> yeah. just Ain't nothing to it, but to do it. And, uh, and, and I want to, part of our ministry, Ignite Fire, we're, re, we're rebranding what we're doing and, and what we're standing for. And so, so when I was sitting down with one of our worship leaders, he's like, so the question is, what is Ignite Fire? And I said, you know what? I think I really do believe that we're a deliverance ministry, but I want to redefine deliverance. And I don't want us to be weird. I don't want us to be, you know, <laughs> give people a, uh, 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 that that kind of like what you're saying this 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 star mentality of hey these people are the ones on stage doing all the work no I, what if we took teams warrior teams and trained them to set people free from fear and depression anxieties the chains that bind us addictions i said that's all part of deliverance and wow. we have to uh we have to be sensitive to the holy spirit to do that because every situation is different and I said, what if I was was preaching from the stage and then now we're going to allow the worship team through worship to bring the spirit of deliverance, you know, into the into this atmosphere where people can come into sense the Holy Spirit is at work. And then all of a sudden now have teams of people that are going praying for the people, not just one pastor or one preacher from the stage. That's the centerpiece. What if everyone is involved in allowing the Holy Spirit to come and deliver the people the way that Jesus did, you know? Yeah. And so you're absolutely right. Yep. And that that's part of the fivefold ministry's purpose. Mm -hmm. If we look at Ephesians 4.11, I don't have that in my notes either, but I have it all memorized. But Ephesians 4.11, it names out what we call the fivefold ministry. For those of you that don't know what that is, we just call it that because it's simple to remember, but it's a it's apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And the reason when Paul's writing this church, this letter to the church of Ephesus, he is telling them that the purpose for having those ministry gifts 
Those gifts are given by God. You don't choose those. Those are different than the grace gifts in First Corinthians chapter 12 and um, in chapter 13 lists some. And then also in Romans 12, it's different than those gifts. But these are given, given by God to train and equip and raise the saints up into knowing who they are into Christ. And that's part, that's what discipleship should look like. We're not given these gifts to be a superstar and a celebrity. You know, what I'm doing at Karis, um, we just started this program that I'm part of, and we have about 160 students. And Karis Bible College is awesome, guys. <laughs> just put in a plug for them real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to be trained, equipped, and know God's Word, man, it's an awesome place. And so anyways, but what I'm what I'm doing is it's not about me. I'm not trying to hold this position where I'm over the activations and I'm not training, equipping anybody else except for using my gift to have them operate at a certain level. You know, it, how can we expect people for a, our ceiling to be their floor and they go further and past us? And that's what I mean by when you know Holy Spirit and you know that your love through the Holy Spirit it is revelation to you, insecurities don't drive you. You protect yourself from insecurities because it'll always try to come against you. Like, you know, what are they going to do about this? Or this person may be better than you and more gifted or, you know, it, those things can creep in, but you position yourself in authority where you fight and you guard and you tear down those, those thoughts because it's not you. That's the enemy trying to get you to believe that. So I'm training up disciples. I have, um, breakout group instructors. And then for this next semester, we're about done through the first one where, I mean, I'm actually not going to be a huge part of it. I'm, I've, I've developed a handbook and all the different activations for them to do to practice the gifts and things like that. And then they'll just keep making disciples. And that's what it is. It's healing discipleship program that we're part of, but that's what discipleship is. Guys, if you're around somebody that you know, has this gift and they're, and they're constantly like not showing you how to walk in it because I, and I think sometimes it has a lack of knowledge and wisdom with people. For instance, me for, for years, I would have people be like, and, and I did, I, I wanted to make disciples. I thought I kind of understood it, but I also didn't think that I had the authority to start a small group yet. Or something mm -hmm. like that. And I didn't do that till 2011. I started something called Supernatural Salt House. And, and it grew like crazy. And that's what we did. But the thing, the problem was, is I couldn't teach it. I would just go, I don't know, just walk in the Holy Spirit. You know, and there's <laughs> a place for that, right? <laughs> there's a place where we don't see nothing in the book of Acts where it's like, and I, look, I've been through three, three year schools. Okay, I think I said that right. I've been through two three-year schools. That's what I mean. So I've graduated. I have six years of, of ministry school, Bible college, school of supernatural ministry. But I can't lay my diploma on someone and they get healed. You know, it's you don't see in the book of Acts where people had to get all this knowledge first before they started operating in the gifts. They were doing it immediately. Like mm -hmm, Even the mm -hmm. Gentiles, like, you know, and so it was it was something they didn't have a ton of knowledge. They just started walking in it. And I mm -hmm. think if you do that together simultaneously, I think that's why Paul would encourage the Corinthians as much as they were messed up. They were operating in the gifts of the spirit, but were doing it all wrong. Like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think it was anything demonic. Some people call it that, but that's not what it was. <laughs> I think you can pray in the Holy Spirit and be doing it as a religious thing you just kind of yeah. do it like uh you know like just striking the ground you know mm -hmm. barely. oh yeah oh yeah so, well and then, yeah, and, and then and then going back to you know the the holy spirit immediately gives you a gift <laughs> and then now you have to renew the mind and and operate in it by faith and so when you know when i was thinking about this you know, there's there's uh, there's some hindrances, I believe, that stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean that they don't have the gift or the person doesn't have, you know, a special gifting. Um, 
and you encouraged me to put this together and I put, I put seven chapters now and then I'm going to be working on to uh, put this whole, whole thing together. But I'm, I'm, I'm titling it anger. The, the, is the, the root of all, and I'm, I'm working on the title, but anger is the root of, of all uh, physical and spiritual sickness. And then, so that's kind of, let's, let's, let's dive into that. What do you mean by that? And so there, the, I believe that anger really is the number one thing that blocks us from receiving and flowing in the gifts of, of God, the spirit of God. It ends our life short. You know, it, it, it stops the flow of things, especially for, if, if there's someone that's, that's running a ministry. I mean, i I'm listening to a, a series of, of a, of a church that blew up huge, but then there was that, that, that anger and that, uh, that bitterness that can lie in somebody. And then it just destroys everything that God had gifted them and, and blessed them to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so I think that there has to be an inward look of, okay, there, there's some, there's some things in my heart that I need to get rid of. Holy spirit. What are those things that, that keep coming to mind and, let's address these, you know, because yeah. I, I true, I, you know, the Holy spirit comes to bring freedom. And you said, you, you said it earlier, uh, he comes to quicken and give us revelation. And so where do we see the beginning of the Holy spirit moving? We see it in Genesis when the spirit of God hovered over the face of the water and, and then God speaks and creation started and does the Holy spirit come to bring the power that enforces the things that God has said, you know, and uncovers the darkness? Is, is it the Holy Spirit that comes and brings the light? Is it the Holy Spirit that comes and, and, and will unveil those hidden things that are blocking us from really operating in that? So um, those are just some, some thoughts that I've been, 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 been wrestling with. What, what is it that's, that's blocking me from fully operating in the gifts of the spirit and and how do we get rid of those you know yeah man because there's a there's a fleshly anger and yeah. there's a righteous anger and you know matthew I'm not 11 good. just just in full transparency i am not good at either one of those <laughs> <You're good either. laughs> I'll, I'll i'll step out in, in in righteous anger and then i'll realize i look behind me with all these dead bodies and say oh man i think i missed it <laughs> So go yeah. ahead. You. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, one part you could put in there is the righteous anger thing pointing towards people doesn't usually work out well. You got to really be seasoned in, in discernment. But no, but towards the enemy, you know, what what things he's trying to steal and kill and destroy. If there's death, loss or destruction coming your way, man, sometimes we need to be fervent in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to Matthew 11 talks about that, you know, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it back by force. Like there's times we need to do that. And, you know, like I was saying, dude, like that's why we need to walk in the power no matter what, you know, signs and wonders follow those who believe not mm-hmm. matured believers, not if you went three years to a Bible college, not, you know, if you have, your, if you went to cemetery, I mean, seminary, <laughs> It, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't say that, you know, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and we don't see that example in the book of Acts and the book of Acts is our action book, right? Mm-hmm, we can look mm-hmm. at, this was the starting of everything. So whenever we learn how to operate in the power, if we're doing that while seeking the Lord and walking in the fruit of the spirit, growing in who we are, asking the Lord, spending time with him in his word, worshiping all the different things. Mm-hmm. that we can be doing it will help us grow even faster mm-hmm. and and i remember the first time i saw a healing that came through me right the great commission mark depends on where you read it at but mark 16 wherever you want to read that but the great commission was to heal the sick not mm-hmm. just not pray for them but to heal the sick and i remember this guy came from bethel his name's scott thompson I don't know if he'll watch this, but hey, Scott, if you do, um, I think he now lives in like Georgia or something. But anyways, Scott Thompson was a part of Bethel and some of their students out from California and from Georgia, they'd come to our church this years ago. And the first time I had seen somebody heal someone that wasn't just like in a conference or something or the pastor, 
And this guy was just like, I heal headaches. Like, and, and understand when, when he says, I heal headaches, like we understand it comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but people we get all crazy that, over oh, some of our language. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, <laughs> we know it's the Holy Spirit, but he told us to heal the sick. So the yes. power of the Holy Spirit has to flow through us. If you don't lay hands on the sick, if if you don't walk up to someone to prophesy, if you don't ask the Lord for a word of knowledge while you're praying for someone, you're never going to have them. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just God may sovereignly, something may happen that, that he has to make happen, but... Um, <laughs> But anyway, so I, I I remember him going, yeah, I just heal headaches by just pulling off like this spot this spider web off the back of their head. <laughs> That's what he would do, and people and he would demonstrate it. Like anybody, there was a bunch of us in there, all these students and all of our students at the school I was at, and he was like, anybody got a headache? And he he would just do that. Yeah. So I remember I was working at this restaurant for a little while, and it was a Texas Roadhouse. You know what those are? The steakhouse? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those That's rolls a, with the... Go get a prime rib. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then repent for gluttony because yeah. <laughs> I tear that stuff up. Anyway, so... um, But I, I remember I was at work one night and this guy, he, he may watch this. His name's Petey Johnson. And Petey was a really heavy set guy. Like, really heavy set. And I didn't know any of this of how he got like that or why. But in... in uh, High school, if I remember right, he got injured. His knee got injured, and he and he had to quit football, and just like it, it ruined his dreams essentially. And so, he, I just, I, I asked him. I had a word of knowledge because that's what we were practicing at school. That he that hit one of his knees. I think it was his right knee. I don't know, but um, one of his knees was hurting, and so he's like, "Yeah, dude, like I've had really bad pain with this knee." And I said, well, dude, let me pray for it. And he was like, okay, before he could even say anything, I didn't know what to say. But when I watched this guy, Scott Thompson, pray for the people with the headaches, it was as easy as just pulling off a cobweb or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. So I was just like, I don't, what, I don't know what to say, but whatever. And I just laid my hand on his knee and I said, <laughs> kingdom come. And that's it. Kingdom come. That's all. Nothing fancy, not, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, dude, he bends his knee. He like squats down. He just takes off running and he's cussing because he don't he don't know any better. But he's like cussing, just like skipping down. And I mean, there's like people everywhere inside this restaurant watching him. And he runs all the way to the back alley of the restaurant and makes this huge circle. He ends up losing all this weight. He's now moved way up in Texas Roadhouse. Like he he's like a regional manager or whatever. Um and dude, like his knee was, is still completely healed and he was able to lose all this weight because of it. And so operating in this stuff, what that did for me was imagine what that would do to your faith. Yeah. Right? Now you can go the other way and say, what if they didn't get healed? That's where you have to decide if you pray for enough people, you will see healings. I'm not going to get into, and I don't have it all figured out of why some people don't get healed, but I'm not trying to focus on that either. Yeah, I, I if the word says that we are healed by his stripes, first Peter two twenty four, we are healed by his stripes. We are, you know, we're that's part of the great commission. That wasn't the great suggestion. That's part yeah. of the great commission to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers. So that's my standard. And I'm not going to ever back off of that. And I'm, I don't care what I see or what I feel or what someone says. It'll never change my perspective, especially now. I've seen so many healings like yeah. I don't care what you say. So, but at this time, that was every little sign and wonder and supernatural thing and power of God flowing through me. Every little word I'd give, you know, it may not make a lot of sense to me. You know, I was in the mall. This is actually during a Todd White conference in 2012. And I just, I told this girl, I just see an Easter bunny, like a stuffed Easter bunny. And dude, her grandmother had given her an Easter bunny. This girl was not following the Lord. And that Easter bunny, she still has and sleeps with every night, bro. It ends <laughs> up giving her life to the Lord and get filled with the Holy Spirit right there in the mall. Wow. So it, it don't, don't think because you're starting off with small things. If you steward little, those who steward little will be entrusted with much. Mm -hmm. You don't bury, this is the same thing as the talents. You don't bury your talent. You, you steward and you grow in the gift that's in you, which is the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, it will help you on your process of walking in forgiveness, 
overcoming that anger because you got to have a revelation of who you are once you identify you have an anger issue mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and all these things help man i could tell you story after story of supernatural things even with the homeless i, I with an angel like um all these things help me grow because it helped my faith go it, it if i could say it in a better way it it washed out the unbelief mm. you know <clears throat> talking about that uh with what you're talking about with your friend too watching your friend there's something powerful i think that happens when we watch other people operate in the holy spirit and we see other people operating in their gifting i remember the fir first uh person i see i saw operating in healing through the gift of the Holy Spirit was Cecil Paxton. And he was doing some weird stuff. And so anyways, I, I, I remember watching that and something clicked inside Holy Spirit revealing and said, that's how it's done. And so when I went to Ecuador to pray for my first person, I was moved with compassion. So here's another indicator that the Holy Spirit is, is, is wanting to do something is the compassion and the love for someone and there was a little old lady in the park and i didn't know she needed healing i just i was so moved with compassion i was already in tears for this woman wanting to go bless her so i just got some money together went to go give it to her and said hey you know i just want to i just want to pray for you i just want to bless you and so i prayed for her and then she grabbed my arm and said can you pray for my knee i i, I need healing for my knee and so I didn't think anything of it. I, I'm like, I'm in a third world country. No one knows me here. I'm going to, I'm going to be weird like Cecil Paxton, you know, and I get down on my knees and I, I, I remember saying the same thing that Jesus said to the woman who was bent over Satan, take your hands off this woman and loose her now in the name of Jesus. And I release healing by faith. Next thing I know, she, I look up and I'll never forget her face was just so precious this little old lady with tears flowing down her face and saying, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I think that's Come that's on. something that it's so subtle. I think people miss the Holy Spirit because he's because he, he's the comforter, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm, I'm giving you another. I'm giving you the comforter. And I think he's so subtle that if we're not really paying attention, we're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I want to do that. But I, I'm just going to I'll do it later, you know, or or I'll set it to the side and and not and not pay attention to those things. Cause we, sometimes we think it's just us coming up with a new thought, <laughs> you know, when it really is the Holy spirit saying, giving us nudges to do something for him. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. I, you know, we, let's talk about weird for a second. I okay. think we should. We yeah. Should let's, let's that. do it. Cause that's part of the Holy spirit. Yeah. So weird is weird is hard to judge in a, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people will resist the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit, which those are two different things, mm -hmm. but they will, and, and I'll actually talk about that in a minute, maybe, but, but they will go, well, that's just weird. And the thing is, first Corinthians chapter one and verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Mm, okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot of times you know i remember i remember the day i was like uh, and it, it was with worship actually so i remember standing over in our church this, it was called the ark and hey marcia pastor marcia if you're watching uh that was my pastor's wife but she was also our pastor and um but they had a church called the ark and this was in like 2000 uh probably the end of 2009 beginning of 2010 but I remember seeing like all these guys just twirling around and dancing, just worshiping the Lord. <laughs> but they were having so much fun. Like they were hooking yeah. each other's arm, kind of doing the Irish thing. And like, <laughs> but we're worshiping God, but having so much joy. And I remember at first, like it made me mad. Like mm. one of the guys, um, Kane Cooper, I talk about him a lot. He's he's one of my best friends. And um, hey, Kane, if you're watching, but Kane. And Kane was one of them, and I didn't know Kane at the time. And you know, he has like this tattoo sleeve, and I think he had dreads at the time. And uh, and I remember thinking, like, this guy, like, I don't like any of these guys just because they were doing that. <laughs> like, like, and that showed how unfree I was. But um, you know, I I just thought it was so weird. I was like, why are they dancing yeah. 
before the Lord like that. Like, that's weird. Even though we can go to the club and essentially, and I know some of this will rub you wrong, but whatever, it worshiping the devil by dancing and doing the devil's dance in a way. People be you know jumping I mean? on tables and humping people's faces, yeah, you know, with, yeah. with, 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 with exactly. no shame, with yeah. no shame. Right. And the, and the other thing to that, that's a counterfeit of yeah. what our worship, the some foundational things. I'm not talking about the grinding and the, you know, but some of the foundational <laughs> things are the things that we're called to walk in. Because yeah. think about it. The more drunker you get, the more you don't care about what people think. You can Ooh. take someone crazy shy, get them drunk, and they will grind all on a girl. They'll do shots yeah. on the bar, just do stupid stuff. I've, I've been, I had a fake ID since I was like 15. So I was going to like, that's what I did every weekend was going to bars and stuff before I got saved. Um, so, but it, but then you see in Acts chapter two, when they all get filled with the Holy Spirit and they accuse them of being drunk. Mm-hmm. Now, why? Mm-hmm. Right now they had cultures of drinking wine at weddings and things like that. They know what, what it looks like to be drunk and, why would you like if you saw somebody out on the street mm-hmm. and if they were just had their head bowed and their hands, you know, they're just praying like this, you wouldn't accuse them of being drunk. What would they be doing according to your knowledge that you would accuse them of being drunk, right? Falling yeah, down, yeah. slurring. I don't oh, you yeah. know what I mean. Like they did a field sobriety test right there on them, you know what I mean? <laughs> and said, You're drunk. But it was the Holy Spirit. And I believe yeah. that's what the enemy tries to counterfeit because there has to be something real. Mm. So anyways, back to the weird thing. I think as Christians, we can call something weird. Well, look at the New Testament. Okay. Mm-hmm. Take, yeah, there's tons of Old Testament new, weird things. Right? Uh, <laughs> slaying people with a jawbone. Like, dude, I just couldn't <laughs> imagine seeing that. <laughs> Axe handle floating. Like, you know, but a lot of weird things. Um, Elijah or Elisha having to lay on a body for the body to come back. I think that was Elisha. That was really weird because yeah, it says he it was his body to body, face to face, completely covering his body. It's I'm, a, a I'm little six weird. Four, I'm six four, two hundred sixty five pounds. Even if they did come back, they would die again from suffocation. <laughs> Be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Holy Spirit don't tell me to do that. But um. <laughs> But 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 look at Agabus. Agabus was a prophet throughout Acts that we see. He gives a lot of warnings and things. Um, Acts eleven, he gives a warning. Mm-hmm. Um, but he comes down to warn Paul, okay, and he binds his hands with Paul's belt. That's right. And his feet together like a hog. You know, has his feet. I don't even know how he tied it around his feet and hands in the first place. That's <laughs> you know, I don't know if that was his first time. But and he's laying on the ground. Showing Paul as a demonstrated act of as a prophetic act of what's going to happen to him if he goes to Rome, yeah. Like, and you don't think that's weird, oh, right? Yeah. Like, it's or spit, hard or to, Jesus spitting on people's faces. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to make some mud, right? I mean, he did spit straight on his, but also, you know, licking his fingers and sticking them in his in yeah. their ears, like, dude. Oh that, yeah, a lot of that is weird, and. A lot of times in church, I think that's why we have to look at God has chosen the foolish things to conform the wise. But mm-hmm. what? But there is a place that it does get weird. Yeah. And I think what that is, is when we are doing something without the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit didn't unction us to do or is telling us Ooh, to do. Kind of like those uh, those those preachers that would take snakes and and start dancing around with them. and Right. Then, right, you know, getting getting weird. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's all kind of weird, but that's that's probably not the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the first thing. And I think there's two things to this. So the first thing is us doing something without the Holy Spirit because it's just a religious act, or we're mm-hmm. testing God, or whatever. You know, we're 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 falling into this is the way. Anything can become a method, mm-hmm. but a mm-hmm. method will become religion. Mm. It, it, it com- becomes disconnected from relationship and the flow of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But even then, once you're in the flow of the Holy Spirit, you can change your motive so that you look good or you draw attention to yourself or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and I believe that's the second part to this. That also will make things weird. I can t- I can usually discern um, when I, I get around prophets and, and uh, hear people prophesy and stuff, there's three parts to a prophetic word. Mm-hmm. There's the word, the application, and the interpretation. 
Mm. So the interpretation is what it means. And then mm. the application is how to apply it. But not always do you get all three. You may mm. just get the word and you may just get the other, you know, just the interpretation, but not the application. You may. Yeah. Right. And so you can get to where for the sake of you looking good, because all of a sudden you've word of knowledge uh, their birthday and it hit and they're like, yeah, that's my birthday. You know, and then you're like trying to add to it and i can tell when people are getting off in their flesh it's not the holy spirit you can you can feel it it's yeah. like a, a wet blanket just falls on top of the the anointing Ooh. so yeah man like oh man i just want to tell some stories about that but anyway so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so you know that's where the holy spirit i think that's why we have to learn to hear god hear jesus's still small voice mm -hmm. Practice the gifts. No, you know, whenever I I first started prophesying and I miss it, I it wasn't because I'm a false prophet. It's because I just missed it. We know in yeah. part we prophesy in part. And when when I did miss it, I I knew what that felt like. Yeah. I could feel that warning. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He is our guide. And I believe he can warn us and be like, hey, that's nope, that's not it. But yeah. because of I'm trying though. He'll honor that. And I'll tell someone, I'm I'm sorry. Like I never try to prophesy where thus saith the Lord. I stay away from that that yeah. term. Not all the time, but I really I, I that's for seasoned people that's been prophesying or they have a prophetic actual office gift from Ephesians 4 11. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I try to I teach, I disciple people and staying away from that. And you, you know, you present that word as like you pray about this. It mm -hmm, points them mm -hmm. to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit within them. And if they don't have it, pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But, you know, it, that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to do is point us to Jesus, point us to what God is saying and us walking in this place of being watchful. You know, Hebrews 5.14 says that, and this is in the context of maturity, mm -hmm. that they, through discernment, exercise their, their senses to discern good and evil. Mm. Their senses. So that could be your five senses, you know, taste, touch, see, smell, hear, you, your your faith, your sixth sense, if you will. Pastor Greg mm -hmm. teaches on that. Um, you know, there's there's this place of growing into maturity where you are walking by the Holy Spirit because you lean on Him. Mm. You ask Him, "Where is your? What are you supposed to do with your life? What is your purpose? What is your calling?" Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying he, there's a balance in this. He doesn't control you to brush your teeth, mm -hmm. right? He's, you don't need the Holy Spirit to tell you that every morning. Holy but Spirit, are, what hat do I wear today? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, I, and I've been in that place before. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I would rather be leaning a little more on that side than yeah. me just making all my own decisions. Because what happens is you go month, six months, eight months, a year, and then whenever you start seeking the Holy Spirit for a big decision, you get confused and you can't hear. Ooh. And you end Daniel. up <laughs> that's you end a, up lost. And that yeah. that's what that's exactly the parable of Mark four. Everything is a seed. Mm. Everything when you sow into your relationship with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and lean on him more, the more that you lean on him. You know, whenever I'm having to figure out all this technical stuff, mm -hmm. amen, like I know, you know, the black <laughs> oh, yeah. hole of, <laughs> oh yeah, I still, I have to watch myself because it's not about my intellect. It's not about mm -hmm. how smart I am because for me, I'll get discouraged. I'll be like, mm -hmm. man, this is not working. Why is everything I do have a million problems? <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, but I, I go back to, all right, Holy Spirit, through you, I am creative. Through mm -hmm. you, I am smart. Through you, I have the mind of Christ. And I think that's something we really have to realize. Paul tells the, the church that um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 16, he says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Now, that's mm -hmm. kind of an Old Testament saying, right? Like, who knows, brother? We don't know. And he says, but we have the mind of Christ. So there it is. That's something by faith that you guys, we just have to put on. Mm -hmm. And then we start to learn how to walk and so into that relationship so that, man, I'm around some people. And I know you've seen this too, man. 
like you can be around people you know they've been with Jesus constantly. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're hearing from the Lord, the wisdom, what comes out of their mouth, they're patient. Mm -hmm. They know when to be a lion, when to be a lamb. They know yeah. when to keep their mouth shut. And everything they say is just like, I, and, and I'm not saying, you know, celebrity thing, but they're just like, man, you have, you have been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's what they recognize mm -hmm. with the disciples. Yes. So we have to go into that. Something that, uh, you know, some other practical stuff. When I start, start started thinking of, of, of this podcast and the Holy Spirit, there was a verse that came, that came to my mind that we overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And I think something beautiful happens when when we share our testimony and we're sincere about it you know we're not just we're, we're not just throwing it out there but we're trying to be known but we're sharing our testimonies for a specific reason it's it's almost like i've noticed not just with myself but with others that there's this intertwining of the holy spirit through the words of a t of someone's testimony that come through and just can transform a room there's two two ministers particularly. One had a, was was actually a prophet in in Ecuador. I had I had no idea who he was. Right, he's our translator. He's sitting there, and he's telling his story, and how he was this international trades guy, you know, multi millionaire, just crazy stuff. And 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 he heard the Lord, you know, tell him. I don't care if you have money, but you need to come, you need to look towards me. And he kept ignoring the Lord and he lost everything. And then he just shared his journey all the way back, you know? And, uh, and as he's sharing the story, the presence of God just fills the whole room mm. and it's heavy and thick. And he's just, just normal. He's not emphasizing. He's just sharing a story and I slump over and I just, I just, <laughs> under the power of the Holy Spirit and just start crying and weeping. He always gets me crying. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God always, always makes me cry. And uh, it's funny because I'm always talking crap about people who cry. And then here I am crying all the time when God comes in the room. And, yeah. uh, and, and there was another guy who shared his testimony of when, when he, uh, you know, gang member um, was, you know, I think murderer kind of a guy and the, and, and then, and then the, when God sent someone to minister to him and the moment that his life was transformed through the, through the gospel that was shared with him, he sent a, so, you know, he was a, a macho guy, right? So if any guy would have came to him, he would have turned around and wanted to fight or whatever. So God sent a woman. And he's in the, in a, in a, in a culture of, of men that don't listen to women but God slipped in this this little lady to come in to pray for him and broke down all the walls. And then as he's sharing the story, I'm sitting there, pre same thing, presence of God comes in. And I'm like, oh, no, not right now, Lord, not right now. And then I'm in front of everybody just bawling my eyes out. I'm the only one, you know. And uh, But I, I've noticed for myself through the through the sharing of someone's testimony, I've I've been more sensitive to the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then during worship, you know, when, when I'm sitting down and not all worship, there's, there's certain songs that just carry the presence of God. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, dude. I think, um, I think it, I think it really lines up with the same thing as if, you know, whenever in Acts, I think it's in Acts, um, 13, 14, somewhere in there. Uh, no, it's a little later than that, but anyways, in Acts, they sent out letters and sent prophets with them. Oh. You know, whenever whenever there is a word spoken, I believe it can either come from a fleshly place, which does line up with the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, our flesh, mm -hmm. like, where does that come from, right? That's the same fallen nature as the enemy. Yeah. And so it can even be demonic. And then, you know, you look at the lady that was taunting Paul in Acts, oh, where yeah. she was like, yeah, these guys are got from God most high. Like those, what she was saying was biblical, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and accurate. Truth, right? Mm -hmm. And But Paul discerned that it was an evil spirit and he knew it and he got tired of it because mm -hmm. it was taunting them. So 
you know, I believe there can be things that from the place that it is written from our heart will still carry that same anointing. You can tell when a worship song, I, I believe this, the power of music is so real. You know, mm-hmm. if you look at some of these countries like Brazil, they will play music, rap music that's talking about toting guns and, you know, dishonoring women in sexual ways and all that. They'll play that music even though they can't even understand it. A lot of them can't even mm. interpret it, but they know just a couple of words. They know that it's bad and yeah. they'll play it. Well, I remember in Brazil, they would put this big speaker in one of the huts that was higher up than the rest of them. And it would just play this rap music. And when that rap music would play, that's when all the drug dealings would start happening. They flew these kites that were different colors. And oh, I was dang. I was in Brazil um, seeing all this. I won't get into all that. But anyway, so I know that there's a power behind the place that it was written. Mm-hmm. I do believe everything's redeemable. But if you write a worship song for the sake of, let's just say it's even just to glorify God, but but is not coming from the Holy Spirit. It's just like, well, we'll just write a song that sounds good. We're glorifying God. We're talking to God. But it's just all from your knowledge up here, from your your fleshly brain. Mm-hmm. Then I don't think it'll carry the anointing. Yeah. You can hear worship songs that you know they were spending time with Jesus and they're releasing mm-hmm. the sound of heaven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same thing with I think different groups could sing the same song. And if one group was, was actually, you know, partying and... Oh, and <laughs> Yeah. Well, one group was not. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just out doing their thing and then they come in to perform. There it, it's not the same as somebody who was spending time with the Lord and comes to lead others into this worship and they're using their gifts and their and they were in the presence. They 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 radiate who they were with, you know. Right. Yeah, dude. I think for a practical thing for all of you that are listening and for us, you know, we're not some hot shots, but not at all. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> but, but for all of us, you know, your brain wipes out stimuli, and and it 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 erases things that you you will if you don't pay attention to something, eventually you won't notice it. Let's say mm. if you if never my, when my wife and I got married, she slept in complete silence. Okay, and so I've always grew up with a fan on, like a box fan. You know the bro- yeah. So I always white slept noise. With that on. Yeah, <laughs> and I couldn't sleep unless I had that white noise. But whenever she, when whenever we got married, she she slept in complete silence. So it took her a while to get used to that noise, and eventually it became something that eventually she even got used to and doesn't even really realize it. Like once it's on, you don't think about it anymore. You're just like. Okay, I cut it on like I know it's on, but I'm not thinking about it like she yeah. was in the beginning because it was a new awareness. And that's our brain adjusting the things. Like when your your AC cuts on in your house, it makes a noise mm-hmm. because of the pressure change. And so it'll make a noise throughout your house. But if you hear that enough, eventually, if you don't keep paying attention to it, you become numb to it and you don't ever hear it really. You don't yeah. it doesn't really affect you anymore. And that's the same way with hearing the voice of God and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't even know how to hear him, but once they do, eventually they get so used to it that they think it's just themselves and it, their brain just wipes it out. Eventually they're not Man. listening to the Holy Spirit. So like a worship team, and we used to do activations with with our worship team back years ago. It's called fervent uh, worship. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we they would practice, dude, is like uh, the worship leader's Michael Wally was Michael, Michael Wally. He's a worship leader now in um, Alabama. But um, one thing he would do, and I watched him as a as a worship leader for years, man. Like he would just go, "Okay, Holy Spirit, like what are you saying for us to do?" Mm-hmm. And there would be times like they wouldn't know anything that they were supposed to do other than the Holy Spirit said, "Here's a beat," and just start off with that. Yeah. And so they would go, I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> and I would watch them yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit. What are you saying? What are you wanting to do? You know, is Jesus, you look in Revelations, dude, where it talked the letters to the seven churches. Jesus was constantly saying this, and this is a common denominator through that. Those who have ears, let them hear mm. what Jesus is saying 
to the church. Yeah. And that's why we are the church. It is important for us through our spiritual ears. It's not it wasn't it's not so much your natural ears, your spiritual ears to discern God's voice between yours and the devil's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and going, "Okay, God, I'm listening." That's your first step is that you listen, you yield, you humble yourself to not be all about you during your day and you humble yourself to hear God's voice. What is he saying for you to do? What's going to happen today? Like, dude, he could tell you, show you all kind of things. And just a simple activation really quick. Those of you that are listening to this are going to be listening to this. This is what I want you to do. For a whole week, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you something specific. Now, the testimony of Jesus, Revelations 19.10, is a spirit of prophecy. That's why you were talking about earlier, Jacob, about... Um, hearing people's testimonies and things. It prophesies that Jesus can do it again. And he, and he uses that. So I had a manager of a business uh, that I still have. I've given away some businesses and stuff, but um, my main company and her name's Sydney. And I remember one week I was doing these activations with all my employees. Cause I just, even if they wouldn't saved, I just pretend they were saved in spirit filled. <laughs> so um, probably get in trouble for that, but whatever. Um, but this was BC before COVID. So it wasn't as bad. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so so I had them do this activation where they asked the Lord to show them something, and she just did not want to participate. She's very left brain, analytical. This is stupid, right? And and those are the people I love to work with the most, actually. So the creatives are easy. But anyways, I won't get into all that. She um, but she was like, This is stupid. I don't want to do this. And I said, just what what do you want him to show you? And she goes, and we're in Alabama, okay? And she goes, I want to I want to see a, him show me a three-toed sloth. Okay, <laughs> what's the chances of that? And so later that week, I think we did this on like a Monday. It was like that Thursday, and we're all, you know, watching out for the things we asked the Lord to show us, and everybody got something, and everybody, the Lord showed everybody what they asked. She gets given a coffee cup, bro, that has the three-toed sloth, picture on it <laughs> so, oh dang and and i remember how much that changed her life dude she started having dreams and knew that she, god speaks to her through dreams when she didn't even believe in that kind of stuff before wow she was raised in a denomination i believe that did it the power no longer exists so man like that helped her so much and that's what i want you guys to do through your week today is what is it monday yeah perfect Monday, through the rest of this week, ask the Lord to show you something, something specific. You know, you want to see this or see that and be watchful for it. Here's the thing. If you don't see anything, that's fine. Don't get discouraged. This is part of practicing hearing from the Lord because he may be wanting to show you something, but telling you to go somewhere, but you didn't listen where to go. He may tell you to go to this gas station instead of this gas station. I, I've done that before. And there'd be a person there that needs to be healed or has a flat tire and I, and I fix it. And then I end up giving them a word and they have an encounter with Jesus. Like that's why it's so important to discern and to hear his voice. And this activation will really help you. So listen for something the rest of this week or ask the Lord to show you something. And this will help you start to discern his voice and start to walk in it. That's awesome. Actually, that I think that that's a it's a good place for someone to be to that wants, especially those who are Christians that have never done uh, or operated in the gifts of the Spirit, to open themselves up to say, "Okay, Lord, I I want to I want to know something. I want to I want you to share something with me." And if those that have never experienced God to say, "I'm going to set my my pride aside and say, Lord, why don't you show me who you are?" Yep. Yeah, man. And don't become numb to it. Don't get used to uh, out of a place of, I believe you can get in a place where he just speaks to you all the time. You just know it's the Holy Spirit and you don't question it. You don't struggle with it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, <laughs> depends on the scenario. Yeah. Um, some of them you can allow more pressure to plot, to put on yourself. But, but, I, but, you know, you can't let where you just take this for granted, what we have access to through the Holy Spirit, you mm -hmm. know? And that, that leads me into, um, let's talk about resisting and grieving the Holy Spirit. Cause I, 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 I talk about this only because it's not a condemnation thing. Um, but man, 
it's something that we have to see the importance of walking in the Holy Spirit to start to choose every day to hear his voice. That's going to be your, your foundation is knowing God's love for you, that he loves you so much. He wants to speak to you. He wants to guide you every day. So Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit. So those of you, I won't get into to the gift of praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, but there is a difference. And I encourage you to go study that out. That's explained in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. There is a difference. And so here's the, here's proof of this. Praying at all times in the Spirit. So you can pray in the Holy Spirit. That is a spiritual language that you choose you have to pray in. And so that's one thing you can do. With all prayer and supplication. And then to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So this is something that you can choose to do um, and, and walk in. And then here's where it says in Ephesians 4.30, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So if you're if you're praying in the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you're listening to the Holy Spirit's voice, you're not going to grieve the Holy Spirit. He says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Knowing that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit, your heart, your, your spirit within you, the Holy Spirit, your soul has to line up with the Holy Spirit that you do not want to reg- like uh, resist the Holy Spirit. That's mm-hmm. resisting the Holy Spirit, where you don't want to. And, and a lot of times we do it and we don't realize it. We don't want to ask the Lord for our, our, what's going to happen today or what am I supposed to do today? What am I looking out for? Am I expecting favor? Am I am I just living in response to how my day goes, and then I may choose to lean on God and rebuke the devil? And living in response to both of them, or am I living in Christ, where I'm constantly welcoming the Holy Spirit to flow through me, mm. and that's where you're not resisting the Holy Spirit. So that's and and that grieves the Holy Spirit when we choose not to walk in Him. Whenever we do make a big decision or or go drive down this one pathway where the Holy Spirit's like, no, I wanted you to go this way because there's someone over there I need you to give a word to. I need you to go to this store because there's someone in there. I want you to heal so that they will know my goodness. Like that quenches the Holy Spirit. And that's first Thessalonians 519. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit and I don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. And we should have that conviction that it's not about us, that we die to ourselves and humble ourselves and submit to God. And that's where a place that we have to live and walk in for the Holy Spirit to flow in a healthy way. He'll he'll still flow. And that's where you see a lot of people that don't walk in any of this stuff. Their life is a mess. There's dead bodies left all behind them. There's their jerks. You can't even have a relationship with them. They think they're better than everybody else, but they, they're, they walk in the gifts. That's not, um, that's not healthy. So we have to walk in this place where we do not resist the Holy Spirit. We let him flow. We participate. We co-labor. We pray in the Holy Spirit. We know that we're sealed. And then we don't quit. We don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So we don't resist it. We don't grieve it. The gr- grieving the Holy Spirit, we should feel a conviction when we don't feel like stepping out. When we have fear of going, man, I don't want to go pray for that person. What if I get it wrong? Like, dude, do you think Jesus ever struggled with that? Like, <laughs> I don't see that. I don't see the disciples and then Peter being scared. Like, dude, once he received the Holy Spirit, it was game on. And it's the same for us. Like, they had such such a strong conviction. Well, you look at Ananias and Sapphira right at the beginning of Acts, somewhat on the timeline. They get struck dead for lying. (laughs) And I don't know who struck them. It doesn't say God actually did. I'm not getting into all that. I don't really have an answer for that. (laughs) Yeah, that one's kind of a weird one. But it did say they just just dropped down dead. (laughs) And... But what did it do? It created a healthy fear, Mm -hmm. not a God's going to strike us dead fear, but a reverence fear of Mm -hmm. going, God, I'm not going to grieve your Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm going to let him flow through us. And and they have and you have to understand you won't change the world without this. Yeah. Giving socks, you know, feeding the homeless. All that stuff is good. I'm not doubting that. 
But if you don't walk in this power, you will not see any of this. You won't see the world really change. And you have to do it all by faith. I mean, I, I, I and I always say this every time that to operate in anything, you got to do it the same way you did your salvation. There's no physical aspect that says, hey, this person was saved and born again. It's you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth and you receive the gift of grace through faith. Yeah. And that's how everything needs to be be operated in. And I and I want to publicly repent right now because I know that God is always speaking to me. And I think I've gotten used to his voice like the white noise. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not recognizing when it's him, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and then I I am realizing right now that there's times where I do ignore certain things that he's prompting me to do. And then I'm wondering why I can't hear when it's time for the next step, you know? And so I want to acknowledge that and and say, you know what, I, I want to make that change and and honor him and just respect the fact that he is always speaking. Yeah. And and I don't want to just ignore him on the little things because then when the big things come, it's like that's when I really need it. And I've been ignoring all the time that he's been subtle, you know? Yeah, come on, man. And, you know, I believe the first step of doing something like that is, and those of you who are listening may feel the same way. You know, you first, when you first got saved or when you first started hearing the voice of God and real, I would say recognizing, mm. he's always yeah. speaking. Um, Romans 8.34 says that Jesus is seated, on, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession over us. Mm -hmm. That word intercession in the Greek means prayer, and prayer in the Greek means a conversation. So he's constantly speaking over us, you mm -hmm. know, saying things that he has called us up to be and things like that. And Romans 8.14 says that for all those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Mm-hmm. And I think the first step, dude, is like we have to, and it's for all of us, not just you, man. Like all of us have to realize that we are a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. What is an what does an orphan spirit do in this context to someone when this is why this scripture is so important? So again, that's Romans 8 14. All those who are led by the Holy Spirit of God are the sons of God. A orphan spirit will have you thinking that you've got it figured out and you become slothful in hearing God's voice Ooh. and doing everything yourself. Yeah. Because it's all about, I'm just going to go out here and I think there's different motives, but it essentially comes from being about yourself, which is an orphan mm -hmm. spirit. And we have to see that and submit to that. The spirit of God calls us a son and a daughter. And what does that look like for us when, even when we know how to ride a bicycle? Mm -hmm. Okay. We still acknowledge that Jesus is there and is there to help us in need. He's mm -hmm. there riding right beside us. He's not, it's not. So when you're learning how to do this, don't get to where this is what an orphan spirit does. I want you to help me until I have it figured out. And then I've got it from here. Yeah. Cause my kid never did. My son never did that. Mm -hmm. My son, once I taught him how to ride a bicycle, mm -hmm. he did not, he wanted me to be there, but he never got an attitude or this willingness to do it on his own without me watching, without me being there. Mm -hmm. He always wants me to watch him ride his bike. He Now he wants me to ride with him all the time. Yeah, He wants to co-labor and experience that with me, even though I'm the one that taught him and he could choose to do it by himself. Yeah. Oh, so, that's yeah. good, man. That's good. Well, awesome, dude. Well, you got anything else? No, I think uh, I think this is is the you know the a great end to a series that I think that will be benefiting a lot of people. Uh, talking about you know we're, like we skimmed over the Holy Spirit, and then maybe we, uh, there, our next session we can talk a little bit more about that and how do we operate in the power of the Holy Spirit for the casting out of demons, for the breaking down of strongholds, and the renewing of the mind, and um, how do we how can we position ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit to flow to maybe the healing of our own bodies, the healing of others, and and kind of go into maybe some more details. And so if anyone's watching this broadcast after the fact that after we end this and you're interested in those, 
go ahead and leave a comment because those are going to be still turned on. We're not going to be able to see it real time, but we can look at those and and consider those for our next podcast. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section. And uh, Daniel, this is awesome. I'm I'm enjoying what God is doing, that we're going to take the mountain of, of Christian media and Christian entertainment. We're going to use that for the deliverance of those who are watching. And yeah. we are going to echo the word of Christ in every platform that God gives us. So um, yeah, I'm excited for what he's doing. Come on, dude. Yeah, that's what I feel too. Like I'm tired of like, Guys, if you're listening to this and you've been feeling this unction to to preach the gospel online, and I'm not talking about your your fake people that are doing it for the clicks or whatever. Uh, yeah, growing it's important because how you know in the book of Acts, like God was adding people to the church by the thousands, but they had to participate in that. They yeah. had things they had to go out and do. They had to go preach mm-hmm. the gospel and operate in signs and wonders. But, but I believe what's different for us, Jacob, is that we're bringing the power of God through social media as well. Like mm-hmm, you're saying, dude, mm-hmm. not, not just like talking about knowledge, not just, um, not just preaching the gospel, but preaching the gospel with signs and wonders confirming them. And, and man, I just know like God's just really going to deliver. Like you said, there, he's going to, he, people are going to encounter the love of Christ through mm-hmm. what we're doing. And so, yeah, guys, we pray that over you, that you would have an encounter not just with knowledge, but with Jesus himself, that you would know who you are as a son and daughter of Christ. And I'm telling you, that will help you operate in all this stuff in a healthy way. Absolutely. So thank you, Daniel, for jumping on the pod again. I'm excited. There's going to be a link to Daniel's podcast in our description. It's also in the comment section. There's We're going to have his website to where you can sign up for his online free course and and go ahead and go deeper into the gifts of the spirit and operating in those. I'm excited for those to check them out and to also uh, spread those around. So thank you, Daniel, for who you are and what, and what you're allowing God to do through you. And so guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button, go to Daniel's page, like his stuff, go to his YouTube channel and social media and, and share that stuff because uh, that's our whole goal is to, is to get uh, all this content to those who really need it. And we're believing God to, to use this platform for that. Yeah. So we love you guys. God loves you until next time. God bless.